Greetings, passive ones. I'm glad you've decided to join us again for Nightmare. Treyguard, Dungeon Master at your service. Clearly you are ready for adventure, and so is the dungeon. I myself am always ready, of course. What about you, Pickle? Are you ready? Yes, Master. I'm ready and raring to go. Well then, let's delay no longer. Enter, stranger. And here's someone else who's ready for adventure. At least, he'd better be. Who challenges my dungeon? Ethan Moon. Call your advisors to us, Ethan. Ryan, Rachel, Brandy. Welcome. Who guides this Dungeoneer? Ryan Ravenscroft. Rachel Barrett. Brandy's no. Well, just remember, team, you will be Ethan's eyes and ears in this game, so keep your wits about you at all times. Of course, if you do find yourselves in something of a quandary, I'm sure my elfish assistant here will give you all the help he can possibly get away with giving. Won't you, Pickle? You know me, Master, the soul of discretion. Hmm, yes. And where do you all come from, Ethan? Framlingham, in Suffolk. Very well then, let's equip you for survival. Here is the Helmet of Justice, which blinds you to the way ahead. Here the knapsack for food to feed your life force. Two objects may you carry at any one time, and remember, the only way is onwards. There is no turning back. Are you ready, Ethan? Yes. Then face the dungeon door, and step boldly forward. Where am I? You're in a yellow room with four doors, and there's a big pit in the middle. Ah, uh, it's been a while since I've seen this chamber, team. From past experience, I suggest that you don't ask Ethan to investigate the pit. He's not likely to enjoy what he finds there. What shall I do, guys? Should we just take him out? Yeah, I guess so. Okay, Ethan, sidestep to your right until I say stop. Stop. Holy cow! There's a massive snake coming out of the pit. Hurry, team. You must get Ethan away from this creature as quickly as you can. Walk forward, Ethan. Keep going. Okay, stop there and sidestep once to your left. Sidestep again. Good. And walk forward. Where am I? You're in a big blue room with a window on the left wall and a door on the right wall. There's a table to your right and it looks like it's got some things on it. Well, Master. I must admit that none of these surroundings are familiar to me. It seems that the whole dungeon has taken a massive leap back in time. Ah, well, it certainly does seem so. Yet we know that things are seldom what they seem, particularly where the dungeon is concerned. It is true that since the dungeon reformed, it has been following something of a chronological pattern in mirroring its previous phases, but I wouldn't like to guess what it's up to this time. Perhaps it has simply returned to its original form once again, or perhaps there's more to it. Quite frankly, Pickle, your guess is as good as mine, and so is yours, team. So let's get on with the quest, and find out! For now, I think we can say one thing for sure. This is a level one clue room and there are investigations to be made. So I set right, Ethan. Walk forward. Can you see the table? Yes, I've got it. What's on there? Okay, well, there's a key, a necklace, and a talisman. The necklace is made of pearls, I think. Oh yeah, and there's a jar of jam. Protect your life force, Ethan. The first priority must always be food for energy. Take the jelly. I mean, the jam, put it in your knapsack. Okay. But, Master, I thought you said the knapsack couldn't consume the contents of a bottle. So I did, and so it can't, but it can consume the contents of a glass jar. 
After all, we can't have Dungeoneers emptying preserves into the knapsack, can we? Think of the mess! Oh, really? Who dares? Who dares to steal from my chamber? Look upon the face of Felum, flesh dweller, and prepare to meet your fate. Ah, uh, well, I can't say I wasn't expecting something like this to happen, team. But I also can't say that I'm familiar with this particular guardian. Keep your wits about you now. You're sure to need them. I seek three truths from you. Answer me well and you will be rewarded. Answer me ineptly, and I plead on you. Here is my first. What is twenty-one times smaller than the planet Earth has one sixth the gravity of the planet Earth and measures a particular time period on the planet Earth? Hey! It takes the Earth a year to go round the sun. Should we say the sun? No, I don't think we should say that. The sun is bigger than the Earth, and it has more gravity, so it can't be the right answer. It's got to be the moon, hasn't it? Yeah, but what time period does that measure? A month. It takes the moon 28 days to orbit the Earth. But a month is longer than 28 days. Well, except for February? The moon's orbit is still the basic measurement for a month. Let's go for the moon. An answer now! Okay, Ethan, say the moon. The moon. Truth accepted. Here is my second. I visit you most every night, but fade to nothing come daylight. I might be scary, fun, or sad. Some say that Cheese can make me bad. What am I? Eating cheese before bed gives you nightmares. That's what my mom always says. Yes, so let's say dream. Yes, dream, even though the cheese thing is a myth. Dream. Truth accepted. Here is my third. Below the planet's crust I'm found. I boil and bubble underground. When I spew forth with fiery flame, you know me by another name. What am I? That sounds like a volcano. Yes, it does, so I think I should say lava. But isn't it called something else when it's underground? Oh yeah, I think it is. Can you remember what, though? No. Nor can I. You better try lava, Ethan. Lava? Falsehood. Magma was the truth I sought. Ooh, that's very harsh, Master. But undeniably true, Pickle. Two is the score. You may know more. Your quest is for the cup, but you may not drink from it. The key to the door is not always key-shaped. The walls await me. Well, team, now is the time to make your choice. Did he mean that we shouldn't take the key? Yes, I think that's what he meant. I think he meant that we need to take a key, but it's not the object that's shaped like a key. I reckon the talisman must be the key. Shall I take that? What do you think, Rach? Yes, I think Ethan's right. Okay, I'm taking the talisman. Maybe we should take the key too, in case we need it after all. Then we'd have two keys, a key-shaped one and a talisman-shaped one. I bet we only need one key, so I think we should take the necklace. Yes, I agree. Me too. Okay, Ethan, take the pearl necklace as well as the talisman. Right. Yes, well chosen, team. Time to get Ethan on his way now, don't you think? Sidestep right, Ethan. Walk forward. Stop there and turn 90 degrees to your right. Good, and walk forward. Where am I? You're in a yellowish room with several windows on the right wall and a fireplace on the wall in front of you. 
there's a door to the right of the fireplace and to your left there's a wizard sitting at a table and he's just looked up at you there's an empty stall opposite him so i expect he'll ask you to sit down ah this is more like it master a scenario i can relate to yes well that's the main thing pickle isn't it caution team this is of course hordris the confuser I have no doubt that he wants something from you, and I'm sure he has something to offer in return, but he's known as the Confuser for a reason, so you'd best be on your guard. Welcome, Ethan. Take a seat, if you would. Shall we do it? You better do as he says, Brandy. For now, at least. Okay, Ethan, walk forward. You see the stool? Yes. Sit on it. Okay. Splendid. Now then, Ethan, the dungeon has been going through some unprecedented changes of late, and I'm sorry to have to tell you that it really is no longer a suitably safe environment for adventuring. Well, not that it was ever all that safe, but I'm sure you know what I mean. The two upper levels are susceptible to many spatial and temporal shifts at present, but level three is still occupied by the Maya world. Maldame has taken complete control of this underwater realm, and she has blocked off all the portals that once led there from level two. She is determined to do everything in her power to prevent intruders from entering her domain, which means, of course, that she is determined to do everything in her power to prevent you from recovering the object of your quest. However, there may yet be a glimmer of hope for you. I myself have business in the Maya world, but I need to procure a certain artifact that will allow me to open the way. If you were to find this artifact for me, I would then be able to create a portal that the two of us could use to journey together to the Maya world. I would then be able to attend to my business, and you would be able to attempt to attend to yours. Well now, do you accept my pact? I think we should agree. We want to get to level three, don't we? Yes, I don't think we really have any choice. See, is he'll say what he wants us to find first? What do you need me to find, Hordris? Yes or no, Ethan. Do you accept? Say yes, Ethan. Yes. Good. The only way to enter the Maya world now is to sneak in by the back passage, if you'll pardon the expression. That is to say, we must travel by ship. Maldame is planning to set up a trade arrangement with the galleon Cloudwalker, which just happens to be piloted by my old friend and drinking companion, Captain Nemanor. It is the Cloud Walker to which my portal will take us, and from there we shall travel to the Maya world. The object I require to help me open the portal is a Medusa Eye. If you manage to get hold of one before you reach the end of the second level, call me. My calling name is Malefact. Call three times and I will appear. Do you understand? Do we, Ryan? Yes. Yes, we understand. You'd best be on your way then. Time is pressing. Oh, yes, and by the way, if you do manage to locate a Medusa Eye, make sure it's inside a suitable container before you take possession of it. Catch even a glimpse of the Eye itself and you won't be in a fit state to call anything three times. In fact, you'll be left in something of a stony silence. Good luck. He just disappeared. Well, team, it looks like you've made a friend. Or an ally, at least. Quite so, Pickle. 
Only someone very brave or very foolish would dare to consider Hordris a friend. Although it seems that Hordris himself considers Captain Nemanor a friend. I never knew that. Perhaps later we'll find out just how friendly the two of them really are, Master. Yes, I certainly hope so. In the meantime, team, on with the quest. I stood up while they were talking. Well done, Ethan. Sidestep to your right now. Keep going. Stop there and walk forward. Yes, and just keep going as you are. Where am I? You're in a long room with a massive bomb burning in the corner. Really, Master, this is most unfair. As if the dungeon wasn't dangerous enough at the best of times. Now Ethan has to run the risk of being blown to smithereens without anything to protect himself. Well, the less time we spend chatting about the situation, Pickle, the more time Ethan will have to sprint for his life. And I suggest you instruct him to do just that, team. Run forward, Ethan, in a straight line. Faster! Faster! Yikes! It's going to explode! Go left a bit, Ethan. And keep running forward. Where am I? It looks like we're in a pub, Ethan. Ah, this is the inn of the crazed heifer team. I'm not sure I recognise any of the staff, though, Master. Perhaps it's under new management. Who can say, Pickle, in these changeable and confusing times? I am sure of one thing, however. The buxom serving wench who's currently approaching Ethan goes by the name of Martyr, and she has shown herself in the past to be a useful source of information, amongst other things. Ah, oh, hello there. Come on and sit down, that's right. She's leading you to a stool, Ethan. Just let her sit you down at the table. Right then. What can I get for you? Food? Drink? Maybe some information. Should we ask her for food? I think we want to ask for information first, don't we? Tell her you'd like some information, Ethan. I'd like some information, please. Ah, I thought as much. As soon as I saw you standing there, I thought to myself, that their traveller is going to ask me for some information. A new mistake. What did you have in mind, then? Maybe we should offer her something. The necklace, you mean? Yeah. Shall I do it? Yes, go on. I'd like to give you a pearl necklace. Oh, yes. Well, I can't say I've had a lot of experience with that kind of thing, but the customer's always right. Show it to her, Ethan. Here it is. Can you tell me anything about the dungeon if I give it to you? Oh, I see. That's the kind of information you're after, is it? Well, that's a very fine necklace and no mistake. All right, we've got a deal. Whereabouts in the dungeon are you trying to get to, then? Say level two, Ethan. Level two. Oh, level two. I've been going there myself quite a bit recently. Doing a few bits of business. The only way to get there from here is to sneak down a wellway. But they're guarded more often than not. Of course, some of the guards agree to let me slip by. If I ask them very, very nicely. But others need a bit more persuasion. I suppose you'd like to know what kind of persuasion, would you? Um, yes, please. She's reaching into a basket of bread on the table, Ethan, and she's pulling something out of it. Is it some bread? No, it's a red stone! This is the kind of persuasion I'm talking about. None of them guards can resist a nice firestone like this, and if you give me the necklace, I'll let you have it. What do you say? I think we should go for it. Yeah. Tell her you agree, Ethan. I agree. Here's the necklace. Make sure you take the stone at the same time, Ethan. That's it. There now. A fair exchange is no robbery, or so they say. Hmm. You look like you could do with a bit of food. Why don't you have a bread roll before you go, eh? Here, I'll put it in this knapsack. So. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I must have let my hand linger around there, must I? Now you just make sure to come back and see me. If there's ever anything else I can do for you, right? Um. Yes. I'll do that. Maybe see you later then. Bye. Bye. She's wandering off now. Onwards then, team. I think Ethan's done all he can to benefit the quest in this particular establishment. Shall I stand up then? Yes, and move around the stool. That's it. I think there's a staircase at the back of the room. 
Yes, you're right. Walk forward, Ethan. Keep going. Can you see the stairs? Yeah. Walk down them. Where am I? You're in a blue corridor with two doors on your left and two doors on your right. Each door has the symbol of a talisman in front of it. They've all got different patterns. Oh, and the far wall started to move towards you. Out quickly, team. The great corridor of the catacombs appears to be getting smaller. Ethan, if you have the key, then hold it up before you. But just make sure, team, that he uses the right door. Hold up the talisman, Ethan. Higher. Higher. Which door is it? It's the near one on the left. Look. Hurry, team. You haven't any time to lose. Walk forward, Ethan. Stop. Turn 90 degrees to your left. Keep that talisman held up in front of you. Okay. I will do. Walk forward. Quickly, Ethan. Quickly. Keep going forward. Keep, Keep going, going, Ethan. Ethan. Where am I? You've just come through a door into a green room with rocky walls. I can't see any other doors, but there's a well a few feet in front of you. It's been guarded by night with a very large sword. Halt, intruder! I, Gumboil the Orid, command you. The password or you perish. Well now, it seems that Gumboil is as unswerving in his duties as ever. Unless, of course... You can persuade him to be led astray, team. What's the password? We don't have it. We need to bribe him, remember? What shall I say, then? Come on, I haven't got all day. The password now. Quickly, team. Ethan, tell him you have something. I have something. You have something? Something for me? Say yes, if he lets us through. Yes. If you let me go down the well. Hmm. I don't know what makes you think that Gumboil the Immovable might be susceptible to bribery. Well, what have you got? Tell him you've got a red stone. I have this fire stone for you. A fire stone, eh? Yes, very nice. It's pretty and shiny, and it certainly looks valuable. Can you vouch for its authenticity, then? What does he mean by that? He wants to know if it's a cheap knockoff. Tell him it's genuine, Ethan. This is a 100% genuine firestone, I assure you. Well, just this once I'll believe you. And it over, then. If you promise to let me through. Yes, I'll let you through. Now, give me the firestone. You'd best give it to me, then. Here you go. Ah, oh, lovely. Cool, yeah, I know just what I'm going to do with this. He's walking off now. Harry, team, get Ethan into the well. Yes, there's no need to linger here any longer, team. Level two beckons. Walk forward, Ethan. Can you find the well? Yes, I've got it. Go up the steps and climb inside. Where am I? Well, you've landed right in the middle of a narrow wooden bridge between two green mountains, and there's a massive drop on both sides. Well, it's lucky you didn't miss the plank. Yes, that well we must have been very carefully placed, Brandy, mustn't it? Welcome to level two, team. A choice must be made here, it seems. Left or right, but either could lead you into danger. Which way should we go? There are no clues, so we should go right. Ah, it seems that one of them will definitely lead you into danger. But which one? Master, this is most unfair. How can they tell which direction that sound is coming from? They can't, Pickle. That's the point. Turn 90 degrees to your right, Ethan. Good, and walk forward. But the monster could be coming from the right. It could be coming from the left, no. Maybe he should have stayed in the middle of the bridge until we found out. Oh, too late. Oh my god, it is coming from the right. Quickly, team. This is the mindless automatum. And Ethan is just about to have a head-on crash with it. Guys, help me. Take him back, quickly. Turn 180 degrees, Ethan. 
Now walk forward in a straight line as fast as you can. Don't let him step off the bridge, team. Turn left, ever so slightly, Ethan. Good, and keep going forward. Where am I? You're in a purple room that looks a bit like a library. Well, there's a load of bookshelves in one corner anyway. There's a throne in the middle of the room, just to your right, and then to your left, there's a yellow letter M on the floor. Well now, here's a familiar sight. At least for those of us whose memories stretch back far enough. I have my suspicions about what's likely to happen next, team, but I don't want to spoil the surprise, so I'll leave you to work out the details for yourselves. Come now, Master. I know what the M means, even though I've never seen this room before, and I'm sure the team must have an inkling too. I bet the M is for Merlin. Yes, so we better have you walking on it. Side so at once to your left. Good. Walk forward. You're on the M now. Nothing's happening. Perhaps you should ask Ethan to bend down and touch it, team. Okay, then. Crouch right down, Ethan, and touch the floor. Right. There's a dude sitting on the throne now. It's Merlin. Indeed it is, Rachel. Ah, Ethan, we meet at last. Now, what am I supposed to do? Oh, yes. First, some refreshment is in order, I think. Spellcasting. E. N. E. R. G. Y. There, that scene to that. Now then, welcome to the Hall of Folly. Nothing to do with anyone else of that name you might have seen around the dungeon. Hmm. Come to think of it, I don't think I've seen him around the dungeon for ages. What about you, Tregard? Do you know where the slippery little fellow's got to? He's still in Germany, as far as I know, Merlin. Perhaps he and Gretel have decided to make a go of things. Hmm, well, I hope we'll be invited to the wedding. Anyway, where was I? Nothing to do with- Ah, yes! Well, not much to do with him, at any rate. Here you must find wisdom, or depart a fool. The perils that lie ahead of you, Ethan, will require the use of magic if you are to overcome them. But as with all magic, there is a price to pay for gaining it. The deep spells I recall, but the elementary magic I have forgotten. Jog my memory and a little magic is yours. An English king who fought abroad with lion's heart and mighty sword. The time he spent at home, I'd guess, was just one year, or maybe less. Who was he? That's obviously Richard the Lionheart. Does he have a number? Oh, I think we should just say Richard. Or Richard I, if you want to make sure of it. Warning, team. Your pardon, Merlin, but temporal disruption has set in. Passive ones, join us again for Nightmare. We'll be waiting for you. <laughs>